Smallville was a TV show which ran from 2001 through 2011 and was mainly about young Clark Kent before he becomes Superman. In season 6, Clark meets young Oliver Queen, aka the Green Arrow, who has already become a superhero. Green Arrow has been searching for other superheroes to develop a team. This team is obviously the Justice League in the making, though we never actually hear the name. Some members include Aquaman, Black Canary, Cyborg, Impulse, Zatanna, as well as the Martian Manhunter, who shapeshifted to look human and then happened to lose his powers, therefore got stuck in human form. He then got a job as a police officer under the name John Jones. Also, Clark has a friend named Chloe Sullivan who became an honorary member of the team under the code name Watchtower. She assists the team not with her abilities in physical fights, but with her knowledge and skills in things like computer hacking. Season 9's 11th episode was a two-hour special titled Absolute Justice and written by DC comic writer Jeff Johns. This episode begins with Chloe walking through the streets of Metropolis at night and suddenly there's a total blackout. Chloe sees a suspicious looking man on a fire escape holding a staff which creates an eerie glow. Chloe runs away but then finds the same man is somehow standing right in front of her in a different location. This man identifies himself as Sylvester Pemberton. Some comic fans might recognize that name as the secret identity of lesser known hero, the Star Spangled Kid. He's wearing a trench coat, but you can see his traditional hero suit underneath. Pemberton says he's come as a friend, he knows about the team Chloe is part of, and he's trying to put together a team himself. Suddenly, it gets freezing cold for unexplained reasons, and Pemberton throws Chloe inside a garbage dumpster. Chloe can tell a fight is taking place outside, but does not know with whom. She sees sharp icicles through the dumpster. After the fight is ended, Chloe crawls out to discover Pemberton lost the battle and is now dying. He tries to speak and say, they'll come after you, check, but then he just dies. We then see Clark going to visit Chloe at the hospital, even though she's really okay. We also see a different young woman crying that Pemberton is dead, so we can safely assume this woman was friends with Pemberton. Chloe is eager to learn more about who Pemberton was, so she hacks info from his cell phone. She discovers that his final phone call was with a man named Wesley Dodds, and Clark agrees to check out who that is. Comic fans might recognize the name Wesley Dodds as the secret identity of hero Sandman. Wesley Dodds is in his apartment putting on his Sandman suit and getting ready to fight crime. But then the room suddenly gets cold, suggesting the same person who killed Pemberton is there, and he is, and he now kills Dodds. Chloe and Oliver meet in their team's headquarters, and Oliver asks where the other super friends are, which is a tiny easter egg for the 1970s animated TV series. Chloe says she's been looking into Pemberton's history, and he has a criminal record. She then uses face recognition technology to identify Pemberton's friend who showed up in the hospital, and her name is Courtney Whitmore, the secret identity of comic hero Stargirl, who was actually created by Jeff Johns, named after his sister, who sadly passed away. Anyway, Chloe asks Oliver to find Pemberton's glowing staff so she can examine it. We then see the killer looking at a collection of photos of people he has killed and who he's going to kill next. We also see he is not a normal human. He is some type of ice-like bluish skin. We also see the checkmate symbol on the wall, which in the comics is a vigilante organization led by character Amanda Waller. It then cuts to the Daily Planet building's old archive room, where we see Clark and Chloe digging up information. Clark finds old newspapers suggesting Pemberton worked with other people who had criminal records. Notice the picture of Jay Garrick, the Golden Age Flash? And Terry Sloan, the first Mr. Terrific? Chloe then finds some old film. We see the arrests of Pemberton and Dodds, and then Al Pratt, who in the comics was the first Adam. Then Ted Grant, aka Wildcat, practicing in his gym. Then Jay Garrick, the Golden Age Flash. Then Alan Scott, the Golden Age Green Lantern. Then Abigail Hunkel, who apparently was the first red tornado in the comics. Notice the tornado on her apron? Finally, we see Carter Hall, aka Hawkman, and Chloe says that, before being murdered, Pemberton had been repeatedly trying to call Carter Hall. Therefore, 
he's likely to be the killer's next target. So Chloe tells Clark to go warn him. Clark enters an out-of-business museum and finds Carter Hull. Clark tries to explain what's going on, but Carter just does not want to talk. Clark then sees character Kent Nelson, aka Dr. Fate, sitting down holding a bag and talking to himself. Nelson is clearly crazy, but Nelson's strange words suggest he somehow knows that Mr. Terrific, the Hour Man, and the Atom have all also been killed. Clark x-rays Nelson's bag and sees the Dr. Fate helmet inside. Carter then tells Clark to leave, and he does. Side note, Kent Nelson's strange behavior here is quite different than that of his comic book counterpart. Oliver is on the streets looking for Pemberton's glowing staff and happens to pass by Courtney Whitmore carrying it. Oliver confronts her, but she's hesitant to talk to him. Suddenly, Kent Nelson shows up, holds the staff with Courtney, and they both somehow disappear. Oliver and Chloe then go to find Pemberton's car, some comic fans might recognize it as the Star Rocket Racer, which in the comics could fly. Note that it's parked in front of Grant's gym, suggesting Pemberton was trying to contact Ted Grant, aka Wildcat. Chloe and Oliver go inside the car, and in the glove compartment, Oliver finds a notebook Pemberton kept containing information about Oliver's team, including images of Clark, Chloe, Green Arrow, Cyborg, Black Canary, and Aquaman showing that Pemberton knew all their identities. Inside the museum, Courtney talks to Carter saying the villain, who can now be identified as the Icicle, is out there killing their friends and coming for them next. Courtney asks for Carter and Nelson's help fighting the Icicle, but Carter dismisses it. Courtney then asks what Shayara would have done, referring to comic character Hawkgirl, the wife of Carter Hall, who in this version is now dead. As soon as Carter hears the words asking what his wife would have done, we see a look on his face suggesting his attitude has completely changed. Clark and Chloe are talking about who the killer with ice abilities might be, and Chloe says her suspect is an older man named Yor McKent, who was once a villain known as Icicle, but now is in a hospital recovering from serious injuries he received years ago. Carter Hall tells Nelson it's time for their alter egos to come out of retirement. As Nelson is about to put the helmet on, he says he can barely remember what his life was like before Dr. Fate. He says he thinks he had a wife named Inza, referring to the comic character, but now he doesn't know where she is. When Nelson puts the helmet on, its powers turn him back into a hero. He suddenly sounds not only sane, but brilliant. Carter and Courtney look on proud. Carter then opens the closet where he keeps his Hawkman suit and picks up the mace saying it's been a long while since he used it. Clark and Chloe are in the hospital looking for Yor McKent, and they find Dr. Fate using his powers to examine him. As Clark enters, Dr. Fate just touches him and sees a glimpse of his future as Superman. Fate then uses his powers to transport both him and Clark elsewhere, and Chloe is left in the room with no clue of where they went. Chloe then calls Oliver, who is now in costume running on rooftops, saying a satellite informed him where the glowing staff is, and he's following it. Oliver says he's in Suicide Slum, which in the comics is the name of a slum area in Metropolis. We then see Courtney walking down an alley in her full Stargirl suit. Oliver then jumps down to talk to her, but gets knocked down by Icicle's powers from behind. Icicle walks over and starts fighting with Courtney. He's on the verge of killing her, but then Oliver saves her with an arrow cracking Icicle's ice, and then Icicle runs away. Suddenly, Oliver gets picked up by someone flying in the sky and throws him through the window of the room Chloe is now in. We then see it was Hawkman, and he tells them to stay out of his team's business. Later, while Oliver is healing, he shows Chloe that he grabbed a ninja star from Hawkman. She says it looks like something he'd find in a museum. Oliver says he wants to plan a battle with them. We then see Detective John Jones being called. Clark wakes up alone in the museum and starts looking around. He sees Wildcat's gloves, Green Lantern's mask, ring, and lantern, Flash's helmet, Mr. Terrific's armband, Our Man's hourglass, Hawkman's weapons, and then Hawkgirl's helmet and mace. Clark then uncovers the table where the team had their meetings. 
He then finds a painting of the entire team together in costume with Star Spangled Kid, Wildcat, Adam, Sandman, Spectre, Flash, Hawkman, Hawkgirl, Hourman, Dr. Midnight, Black Canary, and Mr. Terrific. Side note, the Black Canary character that worked with the JSA was Dinah Drake, the mother of the younger Black Canary, Dinah Lance, who was on Smallville. Anyway, as Clark is looking around, he's now able to piece things together and figure out who's who. Hawkman, Dr. Fate, and Stargirl show up, and Clark asks why they've been watching. Courtney explains that Pemberton was planning to put together a new Justice Society team, which would combine the surviving members of the original with the new younger heroes. Then Green Arrow suddenly shows up and starts fighting Hawkman, but then John Jones shows up and tells them to stop fighting. There's then a scene in the Daily Planet in which Lois Lane says she's just interviewed Michael Holt. Comic fans will recognize that name as the new Mr. Terrific. In the hospital, we learn that the young icicle who's been killing people is the son of the older injured icicle, for any viewers who hadn't already figured that out. The younger icicle says his reasons for killing these Justice Society members is because they once injured his father. Then cutting back to the museum, Hawkman explains the story behind their criminal records. Decades ago, the Justice Society were fighting criminals but staying out of the public eye. The government figured out who they were and wanted the team to do as the government ordered, but they refused. So the government then made up lies to have all the Justice Society members arrested. That's why their team disbanded. Courtney says that Flash, Green Lantern, Wildcat, and more members are still out there, and if these two teams don't team up to stop Icicle, then Icicle will go after them next. Carter, still feeling bitter about his past, reluctantly agrees for the two teams to form a temporary alliance. Chloe then arrives and says the younger Icicle will likely go to a nitrogen depot to refresh his powers. The team split into groups of two. Chloe and Stargirl at the headquarters of the younger team, where Stargirl goes over how she first got involved with the JSA. She mentions her uncle Pat, who was a hero called Stripesy, who worked with the Star Spangled Kid. Green Arrow and Hawkman are on a rooftop where they argue pointlessly. Dr. Fate asks Clark to stay behind at the museum so Fate can give him a few hints about what he sees in his future. He says Clark is a special hope for the future and will lead other heroes. Clark says Dr. Fate reminds him of a team he once met from the future who hinted at his destiny but were vague. Clark is obviously referring to the Legion, who had an episode that aired the previous year, also written by Jeff Johns. If you'd like to see me someday make a video about the Legion episode, then please leave your requests in the comments below. Amanda Waller, played by actress Pam Greer, walks into the checkmate room to speak with Icicle. The two debate over whether the recent murders by Icicle were really him going along with the business he was assigned by Checkmate, or just his personal vendetta. At the Daily Planet, Clark sees Lois trying to figure out what's going on. She has discovered that the so-called criminals in the Justice Society were really heroic vigilantes. There's a moment when Clark says Clark and Lois can make a great team, and Lois corrects him by saying Lois and Clark as an easter egg to the 1990s TV show. Dr. Fate and John Jones are looking for Icicle at a nitrogen depot. Dr. Fate says he can tell Icicle is close by and suddenly uses his powers to physically push John Jones, and for the first time ever on the series, we see John Jones in his full Martian form. Icicle then stabs and kills Dr. Fate, and Icicle keeps the helmet for himself to double his powers. John Jones is taken to the hospital unconscious, and the doctor, Professor Hamilton, who knows Jones is a Martian, doesn't know what to make of Jones's condition. Hawkman takes Green Arrow to the new team's headquarters, where they also meet with Clark, Stargirl, and Chloe. Icicle suddenly shows up with Dr. Fate's helmet. All four heroes there try to attack Icicle at once, but when Icicle is Dr. Fate's helmet, even all four of them together can't defeat him. Icicle is about to kill Stargirl, but suddenly, Martian Manhunter flies in, revealing that his powers are now back as a result of whatever Dr. Fate did to him, and Icicle is unable to hurt Jones in his Martian form. Now, five heroes attack Icicle, and Hawkman knocks the helmet off Icicle and knocks him unconscious. After the climax, 
Hawkman talks to Clark and acknowledges the younger team of heroes is better than he originally thought, and he believes Clark will go on to be the greatest hero ever. Hawkman also says he now plans to honor Pemberton's plan and locate the surviving members of the Justice Society, as well as their kids and protégés, to start a new Justice Society. Lois has written and published an article for the Daily Planet revealing that the Justice Society were a group of heroes and the crimes they were accused of were all made up. We then see the icicle tied up in a checkmate facility and he has further lost his sanity as a result of wearing Dr. Fate's helmet. Amanda Waller then comes in and reveals that she never believed Icicle was capable of destroying the entire Justice Society. The real reason she hired Icicle was because she actually wanted the Justice Society to reform and knew that killing a few members was the only way to motivate the other members to do that. Her reasons for wanting the team reformed was to protect the Earth from the apocalypse that she believes is coming soon. And by that, she's referring to comic villain Darkseid, who would go on to become a part of Smallville's following season. She then makes a quick reference to the Suicide Squad and then kills Icicle. Afterwards, Waller leaves the room and meets one of the show's regular characters, Tess Mercer, in the hall, revealing that Tess Mercer is also working with Checkmate, and that's how the episode ends. Okay, so that wraps up my plot description. Now I'm also posting a part two for this video in which I give my review of the episode. Please be sure to watch that as well. Thank you.